Hey farmers, Farmer Mike here, and I just wanted to tell you how much I have missed y'all over the last few weeks. I want you to know what's going on out there. Mr. Don and Mr. Tom have asked me to get some videos out to y'all so that you can see what's going on on the farm, what's going on in agriculture in general. So we're going to do that, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. However, you can see to my right is... Yes, sirree, Bob. Rosie. Y'all all know Rosie. And she's here today with me. As I was practicing my read, I found out that Rosie loves stories. So consequently, we brought Lo Ro Rosie along with us today. And we'll uh, try to bring an animal or two with us. Or we'll see lots of them when we go out to the farm. Um, I want to introduce you to Miss Diane, and Miss Diane is our videographer for today. Hello! And she is the lovely Mrs. Ingram, <laughs> and we both have shared a career in agriculture. Uh, Diane is the director of the Manatee County Agricultural Museum, and hopefully one day you'll get to come out and visit in person but maybe she'll let us sneak in and see at least part of it while we're videoing. Um, Miss Diane and I have been married for about 32 years and um, we have two kids. One is Farmer Wade and the other one is Banker, <laughs> Banker Claire. <laughs> yeah, they're great youngsters. To uh, my left over here, you're gonna see the corral. The corral over the years has kept many wonderful animals from my farm. Um, about 12 years ago, we had a huge Holstein cow, uh, bull as a matter of fact, who was given to us and uh, by two tomato farmers. And they said, would you like to have a Holstein cow? So we said, yes, turned out to be a calf. <laughs> and we raised it and it would celebrate each one of his birthdays over in the corral but it finally got so large that we couldn't keep him in there anymore so we had to go to other being used and particularly uh, at the farm uh, but his name was Pongo and Pongo is uh, a fine fine cow uh, the corral has kept everything in here from from goats and pigs and chickens uh, to calves and many other animals. Each year, Miss Diane holds three to four events here. And when she's holding these events, uh, we try to bring over animals so that y'all can look at them and watch them and pet them. Uh, so make sure that you're, you watch the Ag Museum website and you become familiar with the events that are going to play out in front of us. Um, right behind me, over my head here is a cistern and you said well what's a cistern well we didn't always have lots and lots of water in this area sometimes we have lots of water sometimes we have very little water right now we're going through a drought but um, this allows us to catch rainwater and to use it on our crops and use it to water our garden and whatever else we might have um, so, I'm going to read this book called Why Cowboys Sleep With Their Boots On for you guys as well as for Rosie. Rosie is an aficionado of young people's literature. Okay, let's see. Why do cowboys sleep with their boots on? Oh, here we go. Look at this. We have Slim Jim Watkins. Slim Jim is sleeping on his bedroll. Some of the trail drives that the early ranchers would have out west would be up to a thousand miles or more. And so consequently, they spent lots and lots of nights on the ground, sleeping on their saddle or in their sleeping bag. So consequently, you see here, we've got Slim Jim, but we also have two rattlesnakes, one wolf, and one armadillo. Also over here, we've got a jackrabbit. So those are all things you would find out in the wild when you're driving cattle from 
from Amarillo to Tex to uh, Kansas and points beyond. Why do cowboys sleep with their boots on? Slim Jim Watkins was one tired cowboy. Sliding out of his saddle, Slim Jim propped, popped the dirt from his britches. Seemed like he had lassoed and branded more than a thousand Longhorn. All of this didn't mind him very much. He just wanted to go to bed. Slim Jim was a cowboy's cowboy. So Slim Jim stripped off all of his clothes except for his long johns and crawled into his bedroll. No sooner had he laid his head on his cowboy hat than Slim Jim was sound asleep. And here you can see that they had their boots and saddles and they're all sleeping around um, what was probably the campfire at some point in the evening. And so cowboys just used what they had with them. Slim Jim, Jim Watkins stretched, groaned, and reached for his britches. My britches, where have they gone? Slim Jim Watkins searched and searched, but he couldn't find his britches. This is enough to sour a man's outlook on the day. Rise and shine, bellowed the chuck wagon cook. Grumbling, Slim Jim slipped his chaps on. Turn, griped Slim Jim Watkins. These long johns were wearing kind of thin. I miss my britches. So after a long day's work, Slim Jim Watkins went into town and bought him some new denim britches. That's the ones that I have on. You can see that we've got, we call them jeans, but they're actually denim britches. It was dark when Slim Jim Watkins rode back to the camp. He was a mighty tired cowboy. His bedroll was a welcome sight. Slim Jim Watkins stripped off all of his duds all that was, with the exception of his long john and his new britches, when he collapsed onto the bedroll. No sooner than he had laid his head on his hat, he was sound asleep. Snore, snore. You can see that Slim Jim had hung his bandana on a tree branch. But who comes along and snatches it but Mr. Wolf. So he's not going to have a bandana. This is not good. Rise and shine, roared the chuck wagon cook. Slim Jim Watkins stretched, yawned, and reached for his bandana. My bandana is gone. Slim Jim Watkins searched and searched, but he couldn't find his bandana. Finally, he went to work. Do you know why a bandana is so important out there? Horses and cattle kick up lots and lots of dust. And therefore, if you don't have something to put over your nose, you're gonna sneeze and wheeze and feel really pretty bad by the end of the day, breathing in all of that 
<clears throat> Texas dirt. Dern growled, growled Slim Jim Watkins. He coughed and choked from the dirt riled up by the cattle. I need a bandana. That night, Slim Jim Watkins traded a week's worth of dishwashing to the cook for his bandana. After doing the dishes, Slim Jim was one tired cowboy. He stumbled to his bedroll and stripped off his duds, all but his worn long johns, his new breeches, and his new bandana. That night, he was so tired, he forgot to lay on his hat. So there's his hat, laying there all by itself. Wait a minute, is that an armadillo coming for the hat? It may be. Yep, I was right. The armadillo crawled under his hat and off it went with Slim Jim Watkins, 10 gallon Stetson. Soon after the chuck wagon cook clanged the pots together and yelled, rise and shine, Slim Jim Watkins stretched and said, my hat, where's my hat? Slim Jim Watkins jumped to his feet. Frantically, he searched. Losing my britches and bandana is one thing, but to lose my hat is something altogether again. The hat was something that the cowboy did lots of stuff with. He protected his head from the, the blistering sun. Every once in a while, he would take and um, water his horse from the hat, which provided some moisture for his head. And the horse and Slim Jim Watkins were better off for it. Get to work, boomed the trail boss. So Slim Jim Watkins went to work without his hat. Darn beef, Slim Jim Watkins when the blistering sun burnt his face. I need a hat. So Slim Jim Watkins rode into town and bought a hat. The smoke of the campfire rolled skyward to the stars as Slim Jim Watkins rode his weary horse into camp. Slim Jim Watkins was a tired, tired cowboy. Oh, my bedroll is going to feel so soft as a cow's underside tonight. Sitting beside the bedroll, Slim Jim Watkins started to pull his boots off. Slim Jim may regret this. We'll find out. On second thought, he said, I'm going to sleep just the way I am. And he did. Boots and all. Now, Farmer Mike has several pair of boots, but as you can tell, he doesn't wear them to bed. Miss Diane does not allow boots inside the hat, the house rather, <laughs> or hats for that matter. And uh, so he has to leave them outside and there's a device called a boot jack. You slip your heel into the boot jack and lift your foot out of a long cowboy boot. So that's about it, guys. Um, it was great getting back together with you 
and we'll make this a once or twice or maybe even three time a week event. So we will be out there doing stuff that will keep you in the know and it won't be too long and we'll be able to pass what we're going through right now and we'll be able to get back together again and I really look forward to that. Um, it's really hard to um, you know not be with each other during periods of time that we ordinarily would see each other. So this is Farmer Mike signing off. Bye now.